I recently traveled on an airplane sitting next to a Canadian who was complaining about how his country, Canada, is worse than the United States when it comes to the pandemic edicts. For instance, he said that if a Canadian travels out of his metropolitan area into another metropolitan area and is caught, he faces a $2,000 fine. If a business is open that has been ordered shut, it faces an $11,500 fine. And I know that some of you have been watching the travails of the Polish pastor who is an immigrant to Alberta, Canada, who was arrested on the highway by a SWAT team for opening his church for services. And while in custody, his home was firebombed with extensive damage. Even before this pandemic, a pastor could be arrested and fined in Canada for preaching against what the Bible refers to as sin. It reminds me of the ad on American TV that basically says, keep performing sodomy, we have a pill for that. Anyway, the primary purpose of this weekly video is to give you hints of how to deal with the problems you see out there. We can use the remarks we have just made to point out to people just how bad Canada has become. Then remind them that we have the United States-Mexico-Canada Agreement, or USMCA, that makes us partners with Canada. When you read the treaty, it's obvious that we have started the process of merging us with Mexico and Canada, as well as subordinating us to the United Nations. Another thing that you can use is humor to make your point, and it can be done so that you will not get people mad at you, but laughing with you at how ridiculous the current situation has become. For instance, if the discussion is about the idea that a person can be any sex, it's just a matter of choice, then say, well, if there's no real difference in the sexes, then the next time you want milk, try getting it from a bull and see how successful you will be, or eggs from a rooster. For those idiots who believe that two plus two is sexist and could also be five, then say this, would you want to walk across a high spanning bridge built by a person who believes that two plus two is five? They say that eating burgers and fries is not good for you. They are all full of harmful cholesterol, but the mayor of New York is willing to give burgers and fries away to entice people to get the COVID vaccine. Hey, if the virus doesn't get you, you can die of a heart attack from the cholesterol that's in the incentive. Have you noticed that the mantra regarding abortion is that it's your body? Except it isn't if you refuse the vaccine. Then it's the government's body. Seems a little contradictory. You have religious liberty to not use medicine if that's your religious doctrine, except for the vaccine. We've been taught for years that book burning by the Nazis was a bad thing, and we believe it, and why not? It meant that the people were controlled from reading books that told the truth, or at least told things in opposition to the Nazis. But now, we have a situation in America where they may not be burning the books, but they're pulling them from the shelves and the internet. It's the same basic tactic used by the, the Nazis. We don't know what they do with them, take them to the landfill or whatever. We need to point this out to the people. It doesn't matter what the books say. We have to have free discourse or we live in a dictatorship. James Madison said essentially that free thinking is essential to liberty. And speaking of free thinking, there's been a lot of news about the fact that Bloomberg and his company have had a great deal of cooperation with the Chinese relative to what will be reported or how it will be reported. This is not news. In my book on China, we pointed out that the Chinese have had a great deal to do with how things are reported in American media over a year ago. They've done this by either bribing news services and personalities or forcing them to do their bidding by censoring the news in America if they want to do business in China. A huge internet market. So they do it. So the recommendation this week is to educate people by getting them to read and use humor where you can to put down the idiocy of the other side. Finally, it is important that while we're doing these things, we inject the idea that the war is not over. 
It's not over unless they, the person you're talking to, give up. And what is required is basically responsibility. Responsibility to do what's right, simply because it's the right thing to do. Responsibility is good citizenship. 